Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hi all, Joe Fernandez here and today, I'll be going over 6 different ways on how to counter unholy death knights in the arena. Unholy death knights are seen quite a bit in both 2s and 3s, so knowing how to deal with them could greatly increase your chances to beat this class. One of the best ways to counter an unholy death knight is by dealing with their abomination cooldown. Even though this ability doesn't deal as much damage by itself, it still helps increase the unholy death knight's pressure by a lot. One way to deal with it is simply killing it with your passive pressure. This can also be done much easier and more beneficial when playing with Breath of the Dying, giving you a rank 3 proc on the essence for even more damage. You can also kite the Abomination. Most classes can kite the Abomination with ease if they use their mobility. This will result in reducing their pressure as well without wasting damage on the Abomination. The last way in which you can deal with this is by crowd controlling them. Abominations are prone to AoE crowd control spells such as stuns or novas, making them deal less pressure as well. Did you know Shackle Undead can work on the Abomination as well, so priests can make use of this, making the Abomination completely useless. If you leave the Abomination untouched, and don't kite it or crowd control it, then the pressure can easily overwhelm anyone, unless you have defensive cooldowns at the ready. Another excellent way at dealing with Unholy Death Knight actually comes down to changing your major essence, playing with Breath of the Dying. This essence is powerful itself, and is even more OP against Unholy Death Knights. This is because you can proc the 100% increased damage effect from Reaping Flames when used on any of their pets, including the Abomination. So killing the Abomination will not only decrease their pressure, it will also give you increased damage with your next Reaping Flames, dealing an incredible amount of damage. Here's an example showing that it works on other pets too, and not just the Abomination. Note that this pet could be dismissed as well, making you unable to finish it off with a reaping, but the rest of his pets cannot be dismissed. This can allow you to slaughter a DK during offensive goes, having more damage with your reaping flames, or even kill their partners quicker if you capitalize on getting your rank 3 reaping flame prog. As a caster or healer, it's important to be careful of an unholy DK's pets. Most of the time, you may not need to worry about this as the pet won't do much, apart from using a stun which you won't be able to avoid. However, when they use Dark Transformation on their pet, they gain access to a ranged kick, which can be very powerful during their offensive goes or at shutting down casts. The pet changes his appearance drastically as well, which can make it easier to notice. However, it can be difficult to fake cast this pet if unaware of its whereabouts or when you're simply caught off guard. It will also deal a lot of damage when it's in this form, so you can cleave it down or choose to kite it. This will result in them not only losing their utility, but a ton of damage as well, making it easier to deal with the Unholy Death Knights for the time being. Unholy Death Knights are powerful at keeping enemy healers in combat, which can be a nightmare for healers that can't dispel their dub. So our fourth topic is to play around Epidemic. Some healers and DPS classes can dispel this dot before you drink in order to not get interrupted as this dot can keep you in combat, stopping you from drinking. When you have access to this, simply dispel the dot from your healer when you know they want to look for a drink. That way you can drink as soon as possible, being able to get valuable mana takes which could turn the game around. For healers that can't dispel this or have no dispel in their team, this can be a nightmare as they won't be able to get a drink. To counter this, you should try to max range the DK for a while so he can't reapply the dot when it's about to end. That way you can exit combat when it's about to fade, and when it does, you can safely get a drink without this dot. Keeping track of their talents could also help you against the Unholy DK, meaning you should know if they're playing with Spell Eater or the Wraithwalk talent. This can be quite basic yet a big deal if you're against an Unholy DK. If they have Spell Eater, they will be more potent to your spells, However, they will also have less mobility, meaning your root effects will also make the DK unable to get out of them. So in this case, Cervantes is playing Spell Eater in order to have a big anti-magic shell for the mage's pressure, being used here well to deal with combustion. This is a solid answer and makes it a powerful defensive here. However, it also means that he will be more susceptible to Frost Novas, having no Wraith Walk. 
So if you're playing with Wraithhawk, then they will have more mobility, but their AMS will be less powerful, allowing you to pressure them more heavily with your magic abilities. This could be nice, especially close into dampening, where AMS will have much less absorption power if you have big spell damage pressure on your team. Last but not least, the sixth way to countering an unholy death knight is by forcing or countering their death strike ability. Compared to Frost DK, Unholy DK generates runic power less frequently, which means they will not be able to death strike as much as a Frost DK, so Unholy DKs will ultimately heal less, plus it will slow down their pressure. Disarm will also be one of the biggest ways to counter their death strike, as they won't be able to use this ability whilst in a disarm. This can lead to more defensive cooldowns being used, as the Death Knight cannot sustain himself with his Death Strikes. As you can see in this clip, where Cervantes has been cycloned to immune the Cocoon healing, as well as being disarmed before, forcing out the AMS and the Cocoon, has led to a kill here in Deep Dampening. That covers the 6 different ways of countering an unholy Death Knight. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave any comments or questions down below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.